Hello. Nice to see you all. Oh my God, I'm, I'm amazed. Many people here. Um, yeah, nice to see you. I'm a little bit nervous because it's my first WordCamp Europe. And yeah, it's my first big talk. So, but I heard that the WordPress community is here to support and not to seeing me fail. That makes me a little bit relaxing more. So first, I would love to invite you all to a living room. So assume that's your living room where you live. And now I have a question for you. So which table is longer? What do you think? And I would love to do it with you old fashioned like. Um, I would love to see your hands up. So I will ask you now, who thinks table A is longer? Please hands up. Okay. Who thinks, thank you very much. Who thinks table B is longer? Okay, some people say also table B, but less. And who wants to say nothing? Hands up. Okay, some people don't want to say anything. <laughs> okay, so it's interesting because, yeah, most people think um, table A is longer and the aspect ratio is 3 to 1 from table A and 1.5 to 1 for table B. But um, the truth is they are the same size. And when I first saw this, I was like in a restaurant, drinking a coffee with my friends. And a friend, she showed me this example and she told me, oh, you want to have a look? What do you think is longer? I said, of course, table A. And then she said, no, they are the same size. And I was like, what? No, I cannot believe it. So I took a spoon and I measured it there. And yeah, I also brought you something to measure it, to prove it to you, because also in this picture, I think it's not that true, but I think the stage is, is way too big to measure. Let's try, no, but it's really the same size. Okay, no, I, okay, I, I cannot do it. It's, it's too, it's too big. I never expected this. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, they are the same size. Um, so the reason for it, why we think this is because of the table legs and because the, uh, of the alignment. So our brain is playing us a little trick here. And that's also because of illusions. So if you look at this picture, for me, it looked also that the green one is moving a little bit. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it's like it is. It's just an illusion. And yeah, we are, um, our per perceptions can mislead us sometimes. So the orange dots are also the same size. And yeah, that was also for me, ah, unbelievable. And, that's why I started with this for you with this is examples, because sometimes it's also important instead of just guessing to test and to measure. And that's what we did. And that's my topic, <laughs> testing instead of measuring. My name is Viola Gruner. I'm from Insight, um, a WordPress agency and Today, I'm just going to talk to you about the goal of this presentation. So what's also my goal, what you're going out with. Um, then also, um, I would love to explain you the workflow. So I created with my team a workflow and I want to show you one example how to use this workflow. Then some examples from my experience. So. I made some growth tests and I want to explain you these. Um, then my learnings also and the learnings of my team. And finally, you also will get the workflow. So I even ha made your download link. So every one of you that you can have the slides, the workflow and some examples how you can use it. So yeah, at the end you get this and yeah, the goal um, of this presentation is how to make the right decision. So if you're going out that you know, how can you make the right decision, for example, um, how to structure your leads also, and uh, not your leads, how you structure your um, decisions better and your ideas, and then how to grow with low budget. 
And this talk is for, I think, for everyone. So if we are having here some freelancer, who is a freelancer, maybe, of you? Okay, nearly no one. Oh, there are some. Okay, if you are an um, agency, who is working for an agency? Okay, wow, <laughs> most of you. And who is um, working for a product? Okay, and nothing of these? Also some people? Okay, some. Okay, just for interest. No, but I think every one of you can get something out here and can use this. So, I would love to start to talk to you about the contact form. So, the contact form is for a marketer is something very important. And we had a problem. So the sales team told me, Viola, we need one more form field at the contact form because we really want to structure our leads better. And yeah, they wanted to have the monthly volume inside of the contact form and to yeah, structure them better. And that was for me a big, oh my God, no, we cannot do this first because it's a big risk. So normally, if you're adding one more um, form field, you're here, also in university, I heard always, okay, um, the conversion rate will drop. So also, for example, nail petal, they increased the conversion rate 26% by removing just one form field. And ImageScape, they even um, increased also their conversion rate 120% uh, by removing a lot of form fields. So, yeah, instead of guessing, I said to the sales team, okay, we will test this. But my um, gut feeling said, oh, no, it will not work, but yeah, let's test this. And it was a long conversation, but yeah, we did this. But how is here the question? And yeah, with my self-created workflow, I created this also together with my team. And we have here different steps in this workflow. So first is to share and pitch an idea, then to rate the idea, then to start the experiment, and finally to draw a conclusion and to implement this test into the website. So I would love to bring, like with this example I brought to you with the contact form, I will lead you through these this different processes. So first, it's share and pitch the idea. So that's <laughs> the document. I know it sounded very fancy, the workflow. It's just a simple um, Excel sheet. Um, so here we were um, collecting all our ideas and we were structuring them. So all the ideas are having the same structure and the same way how we were um, doing them so we have consistency. And you can see there are different ideas and we, are, we have the item name, we have the hypothesis and the key metrics. And if I would like to implement this test I'm talking to you about, um, adding one more form field to this document, I'm just putting it into the backlog and there you have the test the form field test <laughs> and yes so you put it inside of the document and you can see also mm, i linked this part and it's linked to a pitch card and the pitch card is just a simple google docs and i will show you how we were like or what metrics we had here so I'm now showing you the pitch card. So it's divided in two different parts. So we have the part before testing and we have the part after testing. So it starts with the hypothesis. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you are adding a hypothesis, you should write down what is going to happen. And it's also good to write down a number. So we were saying, if we are adding one more form field, our conversion rate will drop 12%. Um, percent. That means from 7% to 6.1%. And we had this number also, it's out of research, okay? It's not just by God feeling, it's 
it was a research. So if you build your hypothesis, please try just to write it also down measurable. Then we had the objective. So why we are going to do it? Yeah, because the sales team told us and they wanted to make their leads more manageable and structure them better. So you just write about the why. And that's also good to sometimes have also the numbers. Normally you try to improve your conversion rate in these tests. And you have also the design inside of it. And so here you can just take a screenshot. For example, if you see at a competitor something nice, you just take a screenshot, you put it there. Because the pitch card, it's just a one pager. It shouldn't be too much work, you know. Just keep it short, snappy, and simple. And then the duration. <laughs> so in the pitch card are a little bit more metrics than here I'm showing you now because it would be a little bit longer. Um, but it would be for this test 12 weeks. So I added you also a link to this A-B testing tool and you type in in this um, left, left side for you um, different numbers. For example, the conversion rate um, you are having at the moment, the conversion rate you are expecting, so normally increasing it, and then also how many unique visitors you have. And you see, yeah, it's a very high um, number of visitors to make it significantly. That means that we really can prove it scalable and yeah, if we are having more leads, this number will not normally not change. Mm, so yeah, and here we see also the duration and yeah, that's how we did it. And the next step is to rate the idea. And to rate the idea, we used the ICE model and I called it ICE model and it's also called ICE model. That means impact, confidence and ease. And it's also um, here in the tool. So we are going from the backlog to the rater. And there we had our different team members. And they were also all written down. And everyone is counting, every voice is counting the same. same. <laughs> so we were rating from 0 to 10. And that means, for example, for impact, we were saying, OK, how high is the impact from 0 to 10? 0 means there is no p impact at all. 10 means there is a very high impact. So you can see everyone is allowed to put the numbers inside of it. And the thing was here also that I saw that Anne-Sophie and Martin, they gave both two points. So they said, oh my god, if our conversion rate drops, it's a very, very um, Sorry, my hair. Um, it's a very high impact, but normally giving a 10, it was one of our first tests, so we still weren't that used to give numbers here. Normally, we never had this high numbers because, you know, having a 10 impact means it's a very worse uh, test or a very good test. Yeah. In the next, you are, um, say your confidence. So. There, we also used our God feeling. So we were saying, what is my God feeling saying? Is it saying more or less? So you can see also the whole team thought, OK, I think the conversion rate will drop for sure. So we were all at the same page here. And then the East. And that's also an important thing, because often we think, OK, with what could we start? Uh, this is important. This." Just have a look how easy it is. So to add one more form field, it's not that hard. So it's also a very easy test. So out of this, you're getting the priority. And if we are now going back to our backlog, we see here the priority. So you see different tests, but we saw, oh my god, OK, we need to start with this test because it's having the best number for now. And then you put it into life. And in the life um, part, so 
if you run a test, especially an important test um, with conversion rates and so on, you should um, take care that you are not going to run another test um, what's testing the conversion rate. So a social test, for example, a LinkedIn test is okay, but you know, tests can influence each other. So take care of this. And yeah, we started the experiment. We waited 12 weeks and we did the A-B testing. So that means the visitors are coming and they are getting, so one part is getting, coming to contact from one and A and one to contact from B, so with the monthly volume inside of it. And yeah, here we used um, HubSpot and Google Optimize. And there are a lot of different tools you can use for it. Just I made good experience with these tools. And the option A was 7%, so the conversion rate was 7%, as we expected. So we thought it's 7% and it was. And now the option B. I have now the question. There we have the one more form field. What do you think? You think the marketing team was right? Like the conversion rate was worse? Or you think it was the same or it was better? So now I'm going to ask again for your signs. Who thinks the conversion rate was worse? So like the marketing team said. Okay, we have some signs, but not that many. Okay. Who thinks it was the same? Hands up. Okay, it's nearly the same like the first one. And who thinks it was even better? Hands up. Okay, less. <laughs> okay, here in front, two people decided another thing. So the interesting thing about it was the conversion rate was even better. And I couldn't believe my eyes because really it was for me no way, and also for the team, that the option B was the winner. So, but it's not significantly um, better, you know, it's significantly the same. But still, yeah, the winner was option B. And that's also this example, why I brought this example to you. So often we read about something and while I was testing together with the team, we saw, hey, often the things are different because the target group is different, you know, because your website, it's so many different factors why things are sometimes different. So that's why I think you should test or why we test it a lot. Yeah, and finally, we are coming back to our pitch card <laughs> um, to draw the conclusion. So. It's also important to write down the conclusions after you are running the test to have them summarized. So we are putting it in closed. And there you have a lot of different um, tests you were running. So I brought you some tests here with me. And you have always the conclusion with the pitch card here. And yeah, so you have later access to this tool, so you can decide how you want to structure them better in the future. You can use the date also. You can add things um, yeah, as you wish. <laughs> and yeah, we were writing down the outcome. So there was no significant difference between um, the two contact forms. And that meant we can implement this new contact form to our website. And the learnings for us as a team, it was, yeah, it was different than we thought. And it's also nice if you are in different markets, you could test first for one market. So you are having less risk. So we tested it first for the German speaking market, and then we tested it for the English speaking market. So I recommend you to do this as well, <laughs> if you can. And some side effects of the workflow. It's the team spirit because ideas are getting collected of everyone, you know, not the head of marketing is saying, hey, you do this and you do that. No, you take as a team a decision together and you, you are seen in the team and everyone is allowed to make something. And often, you know, we lose um, our ideas. We say, hey, let's do that, but we never start with it. So if you write them down and you collect the ideas, you make them true. And yeah, 
everyone, every idea gets seen, like I said, and also the equality of the team, so to taking it together. It's really great for the team spirit. And you learn together. So for us, we had every second week a growth hacking meeting and everyone in my team came up with an idea and with a pitch card. And we did this and yeah, we learned all the time together. And now I br brought you also some examples um, how we improved the conversion rate with some tests. And yeah, first, of course, the contact form. There you can do a lot of different things. So if you have a contact form, um, you can, for example, reduce and add necessary fields. For example, here, the phone number, we changed it to optional, for example. That can um, change it a little bit. Um, reduce and add a new form field. So you can have also less. You ha can have an ex expandable form field. So if you type something in, it's going to open. But that can also be, you know, some people get angry. <laughs> so it can also be bad for your conversion rate. And then also you can use a testimonial. Sorry, Alex, he's now sitting here. I just took him as an example. It's not his quote. I gave it for him. And we improved also in the previous company I worked for here our conversion rate, just a little bit, 2%. Yeah, but it was interesting for us to see, but just at the German and French market and not at the English speaking market. So also here we see the market difference. You can also change your call to action. So for example, instead of contact us and so on, you can say book a free consultation and try a little bit with this. This is really, these are some simple tests and you can have um, some big change here. And now I bring, brought you also m the best test we did with the most increasing conversion rate. And that was, so we were um, building a landing page for one, for our, for our keyword. So we were reaching where we are getting a lot of new um, visitors through which keywords, and we were building a specifically for this um, keyword a landing page. So you put in the headline, for example, the main keyword you're having, you're putting some benefits inside of it. Very simple, okay? It was not that big page with a lot of information, just short and snappy. Then we had also the contact form, also very short. And then we had, again, Alex, you, sorry. <laughs> and then uh, we had what our clients say. And yeah, just uh, something the people can trust. And we improved our conversion rate 18% for some keywords, but not for all. So please don't think, okay, I used this test and Viola said our conversion rate will increase 18%. No, because also you need to test to, to try it out. And yes, the learnings out of these are testing instead of guessing, of course. Um, and also, yeah, remember, every target group is different. Know your numbers. That's also something very important if you want to test significantly. And don't be afraid to fail tests. So I said fail because there is no failing if you test because every test you do is a win and it's a learning. So every completed test is a succeed. So success, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so yes, really, it was for us when we finished a test, we were, oh wow, and we celebrated it. Even if the numbers weren't better or even if they were worse, we were so happy that we did this test and it helped us often to make decisions. And yeah, now, what should you do now? So first, you should download the tool if you want. And yeah, you have it for free. I'm not going to measure anything. <laughs> so don't be afraid that I'm collecting data there. Um, and research different te um, possible tests. So you can look at a competitor or at websites you really like and check it out. What do they have? What do they do? 
then evaluate the test. So even if you're a freelancer and you're not having a team, you can evaluate it for yourself with the ICE model and then start the test. And yeah, congratulations. You listened to my presentation. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Here you can download the workflow in this little here. Uh, I'm now so confused because of this nice group. And yeah, just download it. You can reach out to me whenever you want um, with your questions. And you can write me. You can make now some questions. And I also wanted to say thank you so much to all volunteers here. I'm so impressed. Really, it's the sound check behind the scene, the volunteers. So thank you so, so much to you making this possible. It's, it's amazing. It's an amazing job they do. They put a lot of work. I'm so thankful. Yeah. And thank you, Fiona. But uh, you're not ready yet because maybe oh. some people have questions. Yes. And okay. then um, we have two mics. One there and one there. So if you have a question, please line up at one of the mics. And um, we also have an, an audience that is maybe online and watching this live stream. Oh. So if you're on the live stream and you have questions, there is a feedback uh, button. And um, if you put a question there, if everything works with internet, I will get your question and be also able uh, to ask it. Okay, uh, now, now I'm afraid. Also, yeah, <laughs> we would like to ask everybody uh, to give feedback about this talk uh, on the website of uh, WordCamp uh, 2023. There's a feedback form. You can give feedback to every talk you have been. Uh, we appreciate your feedback to improve WordCamp every time we have it. Okay, nice. um, I see a first question over there. Please oh. go ahead. Yeah, hi, 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 Viola. Thank you so much for your talk. It was really, really interesting about A-B tests. It's always interesting to me. Uh, I actually have a few doubts about mm -hmm. A-B tests, which I want to, to, to forward to you so you can, you know, convince me about... <laughs> no, just kidding. No, uh, no just uh, try to understand how much a, B test could be effective for everyone. So for example, first question is, A, B test can be done also for small website. I have a blog that I have like 2.5K user for each year. Is it okay to do like, um, like a, a, B test for this? Or it could be uh, just a too small uh, group of people. Second question is. So I, I uh, would start answering you the first question. If this is okay. So that's a very good question. And yeah, so I just can say you to have really significant proof, it's great to A-B test. But there are different steps, you know. So for example, A-B test, you can imagine, a, yeah, like, a, I don't know. So the first thing is you can do asking experts collecting their data, then in the next step, you can also measure more, you know, it's also a good um, um, thing to do. And then A-B test is really high in this pyramid. So... Yeah, but do you think it, it will be work? It, no, because, so for being significant, I really recommend to have the data and to use this A-B testing tool. But there we had a very um, high number of confidence, so 95%. So you can even drive tests with lower ones. And for example, also for my master thesis, I had a target group for the experiment of uh, 220 people. So it depends also a little bit on the test. So you can research it. But for being significant for the website, I recommend you to have these high numbers. So, yeah. Okay, so I, for... I don't want to be, be, be rude, but could you do yeah. the next question maybe after the next person? Because in line behind, because no, otherwise a, other people don't get really it. It was really a fast question. <laughs> it's just a... Uh, 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 I we, hope we, I answered your question. Yeah, I was really like uh, okay. spreading out. Can, can, can the next person in line uh, ask the next question? Because, oh, and uh, you can okay. always write me asking yeah. the questions. Okay. Just contact me if you want. Hi. Um, Sorry, he kind of actually asked my question, but I wanted to know how you get into the math of the statistically significant numbers. So if you have a smaller sample size, how are you doing the math to know what is 
significant. So if you are having a smaller target group, I recommend you just to research and then you can calculate it. There are different formulas you can use and also with this a b testing tool i showed to you is a really you know valid tool so it's really high numbers but if you are having smaller numbers it's also good to try first to get traffic on your website and you can do this differently for example seo sea and so on and then you can test better but i know many websites they need to run a test for years to get significant data so I recommend you also to research it. And sometimes you see a tendency, okay? If you're A-B tested with a smaller group, but for being significant, you need very high numbers. I hope that answered Thank your you. question. <laughs> Thank you too. Hello. Hello. Uh, I, I was just wondering if it's really important to consider what uh, in, the, in the contact forms that you showed us, if it's very important to notice what kind of extra field we uh, add to the form or not. So if it's, a, if it's a field that the visitor would like to be asked to input, or if it's something that really don't, uh, really don't add any value. So for me, a contact form should be important for you. So, you know, if you say that's important for me, that's important to measure it better, to structure something. So it should be for you, but of course, uh, you can also, if you want to make them feeling good, your clients, you can also try something else. I hope. Uh, uh, I think you didn't understand my question. Okay. Uh, I um, was just asking what kind of input field, if it's important to notice what kind of input, input field we uh, put or remove from a contact form. Like if it's uh, a necessary information that we need to get from the visitor or if it's not something necessary that we need to get from the visitor? So I think the contact form, what kind of information, I cannot say it. It depends always on the things you're working for. I was just for asking if it needs uh, to test yeah. different kind of... Ah, okay. Now I, now I got it. <laughs> um, so it depends on you. If you are happy with your conversion rate, no, you don't need to, to change it, you know. But if you want to improve it, you could, for example, remove some fields. That's normally the market saying, hey, if you're removing fields, you're making it shorter. It's normally bringing you more conversions. So yeah, it depends. If it, it depends you, on what you're selling. Yes, it depends on what you're selling. So you can research here also. So it depends always, for example, in logistics, they have um, the normal conversion rate around uh, six to or uh, four to six percent. So you can research this. What's the normal um, conversion rate in your market? And depends on this, you can say, OK, my conversion rate is really good. Or you say, mm, we could test this, you know? I hope that answered also Thank your question. You. I see also on the other side we have somebody at the microphone. Ah. Yes, thank you for your presentation first. Uh, and uh, the question is, uh, what was the difference between the conversion rate from country to country? Because you said only for Germany, I think. Yeah. And what was for US? It seems uh, <laughs> it should be different. <laughs> um, that's the interesting thing about this. You mean about the 70, 18 percent yes, uh, where we improved it? Yes, for Germany it? it was increased, but... Yeah, in Germany it was increased. Um, so <laughs> that was a thing. My t I left this company <laughs> the, after this test. So I didn't do the test for um, United States. But my uh, this team told me afterwards, hey, Viola, the test was really... Um, yeah, the conversion rate was, was not that good, but for another keyword, it was good, you know? So, yeah. But that's, yeah, the answer. So it's also good to try to test the different markets. Always I need answer. to do an A-B test. And also for those different fields. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, first, of, uh, first, it was an interesting presentation, and it's always interesting to analyze these conversion rates, like a topic of research. My question is, uh, have you considered it, uh, doing it in, uh, in more scientific way? So, uh, like uh, maybe uh, doing logistic regression, as these are uh, categorical, categorical variables. So uh, maybe you can uh, uh, 
like set a null hypothesis and refute it, the probability level of uh, how to refute that hypothesis, like uh, in more scientific way, uh, not uh, only A-B split testing, like mm. another level. Because always A-B split testing, from my experience, because I, I worked in this statistic and research field, mm -hmm. uh, it uh, sometimes can lead to, to erroneous results and uh, regression it's uh, it's more scientific and, and like right uh, way to do this. Have you considered it doing it that way? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So because we had this amount of um, group, as you saw, it's, we had a lot of visitors. It was like the tool, you can check it out later, the AB testing tool. It's really looking that you are um, having a significant um, proof. But as you say, you can always test even better. But you know, if you are A-B testing, it shouldn't be too much workload to just run this test, I think. Because with this A-B testing, we made very good experience in my past and with this kind of numbers. So we saw the difference after these tests and they were not changing. And also with this A-B testing tool I showed you, you can also Measure, measure afterwards all the numbers. So, yeah, that's my answer to this, I hope. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we just have time for two more questions. Please keep yeah, them yeah, short. Just, my, my question is really fast. I just imagine, uh, yeah, again. Uh, you, you are again. Nice yeah. to see you again. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you too. Uh, always great content. Uh, <laughs> my question was this, and it was simple. So imagine for a second that you're doing um, uh, an A-B test. Yes. Uh, you end your A-B test. You get your answer from the A-B test. You do the edits to the to the site, to the service, to the app, or whatever, to uh, impact and to get the the, the, the update and to get to, to have the version of uh, of the one that the app mm -hmm. wins. And you notice that it's not uh, doing, it's not performing like it was expected. What you will do at that time? I will wait the weeks I said before. So even if you see, okay, if the test is really bad, you know, one time we said, okay, let's stop it without waiting. You should wait normally, but normally never we did this. So if it's a really important number and you say, okay, there's coming no conversion rate through it, um, and the test should be for three months, and you say after one month, okay, we did this once, but normally I say, wait, really, because in my experience, you need to wait to get significant data. And yeah, so I recommend so you to you keep do, calm. So if you do the test, and at the end of the test, you get a solution that if you update, that you add to the site as official one, so that <laughs> will stop the A-B test, and you see uh, ah. that, is, that is not giving your, your, the performance that you expected, you just revert and... Ah, no, it never yeah. happened because we A-B tested before. <laughs> so we knew, okay, it works, you know. That's okay. the reason for testing. Okay. Because you. you are making the decision based on the numbers and then you get the results and that's the good thing. You, so you can sleep well and you know it will work because you A-B tested it until it's significant. And that's really how it was. We never removed a good test afterwards. Just when you are in the testing period and you say, hey, it's so, so, so bad. Okay. Yeah, but normally you should wait the, the time and you see when it's significant. And if it's significant, it was always afterwards the same. So, okay. yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Viola. Question. And thank you so You're much welcome. for the subtitles yeah. team that is uh, yeah. trying to <laughs> subscribe our, our things. Bye-bye. So for the last question, please. Whew, last question. Uh, hello. So the main goal is sales. So maybe you, do you know the impact for the leads qualification for the sales team? Yeah. yeah um, the impact, ah, that's a good question. Because um, I also told the sales team, hey, you should measure this, what impact it is having. But they, you know, it was just for splitting the leads to the right person. So if you got a bigger company, it was hand it to Kevin, and if it's a smaller, to Luca. So, you know, it was for them. So they told me, Viola, no, we cannot give you any numbers for the impact. But normally, it's great to have here a number as well, to say, okay, 
um, in terms of lead quality, for example, you say we measure it in HubSpot how, if the leads are getting better. So if you can change a lead from um, a lead to a client, you can use different steps here. Um, and then you can measure here also the numbers. And that's also so important, like you said, to have a look at the lead quality. But yeah, I had 30 minutes. I couldn't talk about this as well. But good, good question also. So if anybody has any more question, I'm sure Viola is uh, willing to talk to you. Yes, just uh, contact in a, in a, me. In a few moments, she will be outside, and uh, then she can uh, yeah, answer your question. Answer all the it's, questions. It's almost time for our game card question. <laughs> So but thank you so Fiona, much. Fiona, thank you very much. Thank you so much. We have much. a small token of oh appreciation God. from thank WordCamp you very much. that you took That's this amazing. effort and thank that you, you can remember us also. Uh, when you're at home. Great, and, thank you. Uh, and thank you to everyone who came and supported me. Great. Thank you very much.